All right, guys. This is our awesome project of the day. This little Resner hanging utility heater, right? Nothing too crazy. The other day, we had this little inducer motor running and it was rattling. It was really bad. Kind of uh, getting hot, seized up on us, all that fun stuff. But today, we came back and we replaced it. And I am going to show you guys something funky if I can try to do this with one hand here. Oh, careful now. All right, I'm pretty much on a decent ground, right? So, see 120 volts, right, on my meter? Right, okay. Now I have apparently developed some sort of mutant ability to absorb electricity, or we have ghost voltage, which I've only seen this, well, this will be the second time in my entire career that we have some sort of ghost voltage. Now I did check my neutrals, everything's fine. I guess just to prove that I don't have mutant powers, let's just disconnect this known working motor. That's important to say, this known working motor, right? Motor's not moving. Is that awesome? Now, the switch over here, up on the wall where it's connected to, kind of a funky switch. Let me climb up here. I'm 37 feet in the air. So that's our Siemens switch. Reset, press down firmly. Now, I've been pushing down on this as much as I can. It hasn't been resetting. Now, the first time, of course, I didn't just leave the bare wire hanging out while I was playing with the switch because that would have been irresponsible. So I don't know if we have a bad switch. I do have power coming up from our breaker box on this wire right there. So we're about to go pull the panel and do a little bit more investigating because we could just have a breaker that wanted to trip but didn't trip all the way. Or we could have a bad breaker with, uh, I don't know, maybe carbon tracking. I'm not an expert on ghost voltage. Also, my meter isn't an expert on ghost voltage because it's not low impedance. So it's kind of stupid. So we're gonna go pull the panel and see if we can come up with anything. But yeah, we got nothing. All right guys, so this is what I'm gonna do here. I got the motor wired directly to my incoming power and this funky weird switch over here. I'm pretty sure it just hasn't reset or it is somehow damaged on the inside and is incapable of resetting. I'm going to bypass it. I'm just going to put a jumper across it and see if this motor comes on. It's going to be very hard to do with one hand. All right guys, so I got one side of the jumper hooked up to the side of the switch that goes down into the uh, whip, into the motor. I'm just gonna touch this side to the other wire, which is coming back from the breaker. So that definitively tells me that switch is bad. So we're just gonna throw in a switch on there. And when I get that switch off there, I'm gonna open it up and see if we can see what went wrong with it. All right guys, I was gonna to try to do something cool and open up the switch slowly so you could sort of see the insides a little bit better in a uh, somewhat functioning condition, but it just fell apart in my hand. So I really don't know which part of the switch has failed. Whatever resets it though, is what must have failed. I don't know, I've never seen a switch like this before, so all you smart guys in the comments can let me know exactly what the switch is and why someone would need one. I mean, I'm hooked to a breaker. 
brake wheel trip if anything happens. I guess this is just a uh, secondary, a safety backup, I suppose. Who knows? So, all I did was just replace it with a standard 20 amp single pull on off switch. Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna have to relabel it because it was labeled wrong. The breaker that I thought it was, wasn't. Although the actual breaker that it was, still wasn't tripped. So our problem was 100% inside that switch. So I'm gonna go into our EMS real quick. We gotta power it up so our relay right there will energize and give us a call for heat. In the meantime, we can turn that on make sure we have power to the board. Green light, that's good. All right, let's go turn on the energy management system. All right guys, so this little heater has been nothing but problematic today. So we suspected a bad pressure switch and then we eventually narrowed it down to this little, this little fitting right here is is obstructed in some way. So we take a little wire, which you can get like torch tip cleaners, that's what I normally use, but I had this hand laying around, but yeah, it's just not going through there. I don't know if you can see on the back side there, let's go right over here. Uh, kind of. Right there, you can almost see how badly obstructed it is, so we're gonna just pull it off and clean it. Right there. Now we got it all cleaned up. Looked to be just maybe mineral deposits or corrosion of some sort, but yeah. So let's put her back together and see if she fires up now. That's how you turn a switch on. Boom. It's kind of rattly, I know. We haven't got that far yet. Ignition. Hey, what's up guys? So, it's the day after we fixed this little heater right here. I was just doing a follow up with it. Everything's still fine, so no continuing issues. I did want to add this little clip just for a little bit of context. The rattling noise we were hearing in the other clip was just the little 5 16 screws they have holding that inducer motor in place to the, uh, what you call it, like the blower housing. It had just gotten loose. The screws were just kind of stripped out, so I just put some 3 8 in there, a little bit bigger. Got it nice and tight, got rid of the rattle. Uh, but I wanted to also let you guys know, I'm going to link probably up here in the corner or down here in the corner. I'll put a, a link to some other videos that I have, sort of explaining ghost voltage a little bit better. I've only ran into this one other time, and it's to me it's a super interesting concept, this ghost voltage, how you can measure voltage and it'll trip you up, but you actually won't have real voltage there, or at least you don't have anything that can do any work. There's no current going to it that can do any work. That's why obviously the motors don't go and why you don't get electrocuted. So I'll link that up, uh, but yeah, in the meantime guys, if you don't already subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and find me on Facebook. Send me an email if you want. If you have any questions, any follow-ups, any feedback, leave it in the comments below. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.